Greetings everyone. You are welcome in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will talk about stacks in C++, especially stack as an array. Now let us see what are stacks. A stack is a data structure that provides temporary storage of data in such a way that the element stored last will be retrieved first. So it is a temporary storage. It means stacks are stored in RAM and they are usually arrays only. And in this, the element which is stored last will be the one which is retrieved first. This method is also called LIFO, that is last in, first out. So if we take a real life example, we have seen stack of copies, stack of plates, etc. So if you can see, this is a stack of copies and the first copy you put in the stack is the last one to be removed from it. If this is the first copy that which, have, uh, which you have just recently put in the stack, so this will be the first one to be removed. This is the last copy and so it will be the first one to be removed. Now what operations can be performed on stack? A stack is a linear data structure. It is controlled by two operations, push and pop. Both the operations take place from one end of the stack which is usually called top and top points to the current top position of the stack. So when we push, it means we are putting, we are adding something to the stack and, uh, and uh, we can push only at the top end of the stack and when we pop, we can pop only from the uh, top of the stack and this time also we cannot, uh, you see if you try to remove, pop means deleting an element from the stack and if you try to remove and remove a copy from here, you will see the entire stack will fall. And similar is the case if you try to push the copy um, here or here, your stack will fall. So uh, all the operations, both the operations push and pop can be performed only on the top of the stack. So push operation adds an element to the top of the stack and pop operation removes an element. Push means adding to the stack and pop means removing from the stack. And both the operations, they take place only from the top of the stack. So we can add to the stack only from uh, only at the top position and you can remove from the stack only from the top position. And these two operations implement the LIFO method. Now stack can be implemented in two ways, as an array and as a linked list. So in, video, in this video tutorial, we are talking about stack as an array. Now array implementation of stack uses an array to store data and an integer type variable usually called the top which contains the index number of the topmost element of the stack. So if we consider this as a, as a stack, we can see there are three elements which are filled in the stack. So top will contain the index number of the topmost position of the stack. So the topmost position index number is, the index number of the topmost position of the stack is 2. So top will contain 2. So you can see to create a stack, we need an array. So we have created, we have given the name stack to it and you can give any name. And this is this has size 5 as you have seen here. It has 5, you can store 5 elements from 0 to 4. And at the current position, top is 2. And the variable top, it contains the index number of the topmost filled element of the array. Now what is push operation? Let us understand it again. Initially, when the stack is empty, top con can have any integer value other than any valid index number of the array. So you can keep top equal to minus 1 or it can be any negative number because all positive numbers starting from 0, they are valid index number for the array. Now when the first element in the empty stack is added to the stack, it goes to the 0th position of the array and top is initialized to value 0. After this, every push operation increases the top by 1 and inserts new data at that particular position. So initially, our top is minus 1. When the first element is inserted, top will become 0 and the element is added at that position. And for every subsequent push operation, top is simply incremented by 1 and the data is inserted at that particular position. As arrays are fixed in length, elements cannot be inserted 
beyond the maximum size of the array very important so if we try to push the data beyond the maximum size of the stack it results in data overflow now let us uh, see the memory diagram so if we have a uh, an array of five elements as we have discussed earlier initially our stack is empty so top is minus 1 Suppose we add one element 10 to it, uh, so top will be incremented by 1 and top will become 0 and this element is added at the 0th position of the array. Now again, if we add uh, 20 to it, now the top will again be incremented, top was 0 initially, now top will become 1 and when we insert this element, this will be inserted at this index number 1 of the array. So next is again we are pushing 30, so when we push this element 30, so now again top will be incremented and top will become 2. So we push it, the element 30 comes at the uh, index number 2. So again if we push one more element 40, top will become 3 and top is incremented by 1. So it is 2 here, so it will become 3 and the element 40 is inserted at index number 3. So again if we want to push one more element, see one space is there. So uh, top will again be incremented, top will become 4. And we are pushing 50. So 50 will come at index number 4. Now you see my stack is full. My top has reached maximum limit of the array. So if I try to push one more element to it, it will result in stack overflow. Pop operation. Pop operation deletes the most recently entered item from the stack. So any attempt to delete an element from the empty stack results in data underflow. So if our stack is empty and we try to perform pop operation, it results in data underflow. The variable top contains the index number of the current top position of the stack. So each time when the pop operation is performed, the top variable is decremented by 1. We simply decremented by 1. So that means the element has been popped from the stack. Because we read our stack only from top till 0. Let us see the memory diagram of it. Now you can see uh, we inserted 5 elements in the, uh, we pushed 5 elements in our uh, stack. Uh, so now the top is at uh, index number 4. So if we perform the pop operation, top will simply be decremented and top will become 3. And again if we perform the pop operation, top will simply be decremented and top will become 2. So this is our stack now. You can see uh, this is the most recently entered item and this is popped first and then this is popped first. And now again if we try to perform the pop operation, top will become uh, 2. We can see here, top will become 1. Top is 2 here, so top will become 1. And there are two elements in the stack now. And again if we perform the pop operation, top will become 0 and it has only one element. And if we perform one more operation, the top will become minus 1. So now stack is empty. And if we further try to perform a pop operation, uh, uh, it will result in data underflow. Now let us uh, write a program to illustrate operations on stack as an integer array. So if you see here, uh, there are, uh, there are, we have included the header files iostream.h and process.h and this is the size of the stack. I have created a class stack in which the private members are an array of size 5 and then a variable top which to uh, keep a track of the topmost element of the stack and then there are three public member functions uh, rather four stack which is the constructor and it initializes top to minus one because this is the first value which top is going to take and this is, it is not an index number and then uh, we, I have one function push through which I am trying to insert an element so I am checking if top is size minus one so see how the stack is full an element cannot be added otherwise we simply increment top by 1 and we add the item at the top position of the array. And this is the next function pop. In this we will check if top is minus 1, stack is empty and we cannot perform any operation, a pop operation. Otherwise we will see out the popped data which is the topmost element of the array and we simply decrement top by 1. For displaying the top we always start from top and go till 0. And we display all the elements. You can see we have used a loop from top till 0 and we increment every time i by decrement i by 1. So in the main I will create an object of class stack, stack s1. And these are the two variables which I have created. Then I am using a while1 loop and 
I am uh, displaying uh, uh, the choices to the user one for push, two for pop and three for display and four for exist and I will ask the user to enter the choice, input the choice in the variable ch. If ch is one, I will ask the user to input item, which whatever item the, they want to enter in the stack, the item is inputted and then the push function is called. I will use the object s1 to call the push function. If the choice is two, I will call the function pop and again the object is used to call this function. If the choice is three, the display function is called. Otherwise, the exit function is called and the function is and the program is exited. Let us see the memory diagram to make it more clear. And this is the sample output which I have created. So when we run this program, the menu will be displayed like this. One push, two pop, three display and four exit. And the user will be asked to enter the choice. So initially my stack is empty. You can see the stack is empty. This is my stack and my top is minus one. So initially I cannot uh, pop an element from the stack because it will result in data overflow. So I will enter the choice one, which is push. And I will enter the item. Suppose I've entered 11. So you can see the top is incremented and top has become zero and 11 is inserted at the index number zero. So again, the menu will be displayed. So again, I'm trying to push one more element. I have input, I have uh, inputted the choice one. Now I will enter the item uh, 12 and you can see here top is again incremented and 12 is inserted at the index number one. Now again the uh, menu is displayed and again I am trying to push one more element. So I have uh, used the choice one and I am entering uh, data 30, 13. So you can see there top is incremented by one, top was earlier one, now it is two and this item is inter inserted at the index number two. Now uh, again the menu will be displayed and this time, uh, instead of pushing, I, am, I'm, uh, I want to pop the data. So I've inputted the choice 2 and you can see that the uh, popped data is displayed 13. And if we see the status of my stack, now the top is 1. Earlier it was 2. It is decremented by 1 and 13 has been popped from the stack. So again, when you uh, display the uh, menu, again, uh, then if I again pop an item, I will use the choice 2. And again, it will display the popped data. This is the pop data 12, it has to be 12, sorry. And this will be popped. And you can see this is the uh, current status of the stack in which top is zero and the element is 11. If there's only one element in the stack. Now I am using choice four to exit the uh, program. So this is the current status of my stack. Now let us uh, write one more program to illustrate operations on stack as an array of objects. So in this, uh, I've included three header files, iostream.h, stdio.h and process.h according to my need. And then again, this is a constant integer size, which is containing the size of the stack. And this time I'm declaring an, a, uh, a structure here too, in which I have three members, role, name and total. And I'm creating a class in which I'm creating an array of this structure. You can see here, this is the name of the structure and I'm creating array of size uh, five. And I'm creating, uh, this is not a simple array, this is an array of structure and I'm creating a variable top which will hold the topmost position of the stack. And in the public uh, uh, section again I have the same, uh, I have one constructor uh, in which I'm initializing top by minus one. Then I'm using function push and I'm uh, sending the data for row number, name and total and um, and if size is equal to minus one again I'm displaying overflow. Otherwise, simply increment, it, increment top by one and add all the elements uh, to the date uh, or, or all the data to the topmost element. So a add top dot role equal to R and I'm copying the name because I cannot equate it. So add top dot name comma N and add top dot total equal to dot. And for the pop function, I'm checking if top is minus one, the stack is empty. Otherwise, I'm displaying the pop data first in which I'm displaying add top dot role, add top dot name and add top dot total dot total and I'm uh, simply decrementing top by one. Now in the display function again I'm going from top till zero and I'm displaying all the elements. This has to be total total. You make it total and here also total. Now in void main I'm clear I'm declaring an object s1 of class stack and these are the few variables which I'm declaring while one loop is being used and this is the all the choices are being displayed. And then uh, I'm entering the choice. If the choice is one, 
I'm entering the data for all the elements, uh, 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 array, uh, all, all the elements of the array, uh, roll number, name, and total. And I'm pushing, I'm, uh, I'm calling the function push to push this data. And if the choice is two, I'm calling the function pop. And the choice is three, I'm calling the function display. Otherwise, I am exiting from the program. Let us see the memory diagram of it. In the memory diagram, you can see uh, there are four, uh, the mem uh, menu is being displayed with four choices, one push, two pop, three display and four exit. Now in the beginning, um, I am inputting the choice one. So when I input the choice one, I will be asked to enter the data. So suppose this is a sample data which I am inputting one name uh, Ramesh and the total 235. So you see that initially the to uh, top was minus one. So the top will be incremented and top will become zero. And this data is inserted at the zeroth position of the uh, stack. Now again the menu will be displayed and again I'm entering the choice one. I want to push the data and this time I'm entering in the record for two Shub and 450. Again top will be incremented by one. You can see top is one here and this data is inserted here at the index number one. So again the menu will be displayed and again I'm uh, choosing uh, one option. So again enter, I'm entering the data as three Raman and 432. So this data top is again incremented. You can see top was one and now it is two and this data is incremented at the index number two. This is the index number two. Now in the, again the menu will be displayed and this time I am uh, I'm entering the choice as two. I'm, I want to pop the data. So the topmost data will be popped. So this is the topmost data. This will be popped and after this operation top will become one and this, these are the two elements which are left in the stack. So if the menu is displayed again and I'm again choosing the choice two. So again the topmost data will be popped. This is my topmost data. This will be popped and my top will become zero and I'm left with this data in the stack. Now I'm choosing the choice four. So I will exit from the uh, program and my program will end. And this uh, stack will also be deleted because this is stack as an array and it is stored in RAM. So this is, uh, this is all for this session and I hope you have understood stack as an array. If you like this video, kindly give thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much.